Okay. Should I turn this? Uh, let's uh, shake hands. <laughs> now, um, I hope we will end it that way. <laughs> we'll end, yes. <laughs> but we don't have to. Huh? Not, necessary. Not necessary. Not necessary. Now, the thing is that uh, uh, I've uh, been at some of your sessions. You don't really speak into the open. You really visit people's home, and there people visit you. And then you don't really start until somebody asks a question. So all you really do is you give answers to questions. And then you tell that they're not really answers, because we know the answers already. We are like some ventriloquist who is asking the question, and then with another voice, we're giving ourselves the answer. So, um, um, after a little while, I've had experience, nobody dares to ask another question because every question seems to explode in our face. So um, I have uh, learned, of course, uh, as a kid, many things. Uh, for example, that you are there and I'm here. But now I start to slowly uh, discover that I might not be able to see you, but that I only can see, say, my image of you, my idea of you. So, in, in a way, uh, I have the feeling nowadays that I actually create you, and that you create me. But you talk about our problems, and you tell that you are in a little different position. Uh, I don't think you got me right. No, no, I, uh, <laughs> no, I'm no, sure. no, that's why I ask questions. Yes, uh, that is true. The the questions are born out of the answers you already have. Otherwise, uh, you cannot ask any questions. But we have been brainwashed to believe that uh, you should ask questions and get the answers from those you think are competent enough to give the answers. But actually, those who ask the questions are not really interested in the answers. If, as you say, that I give the answers, which I really don't give the answers, they seem to be the answers to the questions which they are throwing at me. But if there is any answer to that question, this question should go. But they still continue to ask the questions. That implies that the answers which they think are coming forth or from me are not really the answers they want. What they want is only a confirmation to the answers they already have. So if there is any answer to the question, the, ans the question should go. And if the question goes, the answers they have from which the answers have been formulated also go with them. But there arises a point because the answers are not their answers. The answers have given by those in whom they have tremendous confidence and faith and believe that they are the real answers. But they are not so sure, sure, otherwise they wouldn't be asking these questions at all. So if the question goes, the answer also goes with it. And along with the answer, those who are responsible for giving us the answers, are putting the answers there in us, also have to go. So the sentiment comes into the picture, and they dare not question the answer they already have because they are questioning the teachers who are responsible for the answers. So the, the whole game is on their part. You see, I'm not playing the game with them. I'm just pointing out the absurdity of asking the questions because they really do not want the answers to their questions. So what they are really interested in is confirmation from me, so that they feel comforted, so they feel strengthened and fortified in the belief that they are really the answers. But there is a gnawing doubt in them. They are not so sure that the answers are the real answers for their problems. As I very often point out, there are really no questions there at all. There are no problems there. The problem is the solution so they have, offered by those in whom they have faith, tremendous faith and confidence, and believe the teachers to be in position of something, and their solutions are the real solutions for the problems with which they are confronted with. But really they are not the solutions. If they were the solutions, 
The solution should solve the problem, but the problems are still there. If really there is no solution for a problem, then the problem also goes with it. In exactly the same way, they really do not want the answers. So they are only interested in finding out somebody who confirms them. You know, Through that confirmation, they feel strengthened and fortified in the answers that they have, but yet the doubt that something is wrong with them and they are not ready to accept that situation. So, so they are really interested in comforters, they are interested in ice packs that, so that they can feel comfortable in their situation. Actually, they, they are, there are no comforters there. See, they are not really interested in solving the problems. I do not see any problem there. I see only the solutions, but I am telling them that they are not the solutions, but they are not ready to free themselves from the problems, and if the problems go, they also go with the problems. And they are not ready for that kind of a thing. So they are playing with this question you, and You answer. mean that if they solve the problems, or if we solve the problems, that we go in the process? You as you know yourself, you as you experience yourself, that moment of knowledge comes to an end. That means we die? That it's, it's not just a psychological, poetic, romantic death, but a physical death occurs there. Physical death means clinical death. But there is no such a thing as a physical death for this body at all. So death is a something which cannot be experienced by this body. As a matter of fact, the body is, is some sort of a, a, an idea that we have created for ourselves. The body has no independent existence of its own. Uh, you're, you began this whatever you want to call it, the conversation or the dialogue, by making a statement that uh, you create me. That is true, but you must have an image of yourself. If you don't have an image of yourself, you have no way of creating me. You seem to have an image of me, and it is that image you project it on me and create me, whereas I do not have any image of myself. So I have no way of creating you. That seems to be the, the, the basic uh, problem here, or the, the difficulty of understanding that how it is possible to be without an image. So the image we have of ourselves is put in by culture. Culture is the one that has created this problem for us. And so as a matter of fact, if you want to experience the existence of your own body, it is not possible to exist, experience your own existence without the help of the knowledge that is put in there by our culture or society or whatever you want to call it. So the culture really teaches us how to see. How to see, how to look, how to hear, how to listen, how to experience things. Never see. So and the most important question which we all uh, pose ourselves and throw at others is how to live. So this is a living organism. It is not interested in asking any questions as to how to live. But at the same time, the culture, uh, my parents and many other parents, tell kids from the beginning that they're not good enough, that they have to learn everything, and they get continuously actually flack or punishment for what they do wrong, very little compliment for what they do right. So the, the focus is on not being Good. That, that is the basic problem which we are facing today. So, but this is not interested in learning anything and knowing anything from us. But to be able to function in this world, we have to accept what is expected of us. See? So, what they have put in there is the fear. The fear that, you see, you will not be able to fit into the, the value system that they have created for us. Actually, they do not themselves believe in what they are teaching us. It doesn't operate in their lives. So they put that, you see, the neurotic situation across to the children and create this fear. You see, what we have there is only actually the fear. The fear of losing what you know. The fear of losing what you are experiencing yourself through the help of that knowledge, what we call knowledge. When I use that word knowledge, I do not uh, use it in a very mysterious, mystical, or metaphysical sense. The knowledge that that is a flashlight, that that is a video camera, 
that you see this is my hand, this is my nose, that's what you teach your children. Yes. Every time you have a visitor, you ask your child, show me your hand, show me your nose, show me your ears, show me your teeth. Probably they don't ask them to show the teeth because they don't still have the teeth there. <laughs> that's a different story. But you see, <clears throat> tell, tell your friend the name. So that is how we build the identity. The identity is born out of fear. So you do not want the identity to come to you. The only way you can maintain constantly this identity is through the demand to know more and more and more. We already know a lot, but we are not ready to free ourselves from the knowledge we have been accumulating. So we want to accumulate, add more and more and more to that knowledge. So that's the most important thing. The identity is the most important thing. How do you maintain and give continuity to that identity? It is through the constant use of memory. That's all that is there. The knowledge is memory. Since, since you've learned. Since we, we, we are taught by the culture, yeah. the society, educators, teachers, the whole lot of them, whole environment. Hmm? So there's no original thought of our there, own? There is no thought which you can call your own. I don't have any thoughts which I can call my own. So I assure you that you don't have any thoughts which you So can it's all call. acquired. All acquired. Like so all of our experiences are also born out of the knowledge we have. Without the knowledge, you have no way of experiencing anything. So the knowledge we have is not ours. Whether they are material uh, or spiritual, it really doesn't matter. Unfortunately, the culture has created what is called the spiritual values and put them on a higher level. And we all consider that the spiritual values are more important than material values. But our demand is only for the material values only. We cover it up with the idea that we are pursuing some spiritual values. Because the instrument which we are using is matter, which is thought is matter. And so all the spiritual goals are materialistic in their value. When we go to a church, what do we do? You pray to God. And what do we want from God? See, the material benefits, health, wealth, and more knowledge, this, that, and the other. So how can you place spiritual values on a higher level? We feel that by practicing spiritual values, we are superior to all those others who are pursuing the materialistic values. I do not see basically any difference between those who are interested in making millions and millions of gitas or those who are interested in collecting millions and millions of spiritual experiences. But it makes you feel <clears throat> good, makes you feel superior, to the rest of those whom we condemn as materialistic in their lives and in their values. So it makes us feel good. That's about all that is there about the spiritual values which you have been preaching for centuries. For a long, long time. For a long, long time. So, we get... so unfortunately, uh, in wealthy countries uh, in the West, you have created a market for those people who come from outside and sell those shoddy pieces of goods and make you believe that they have the answers for your values. So perhaps <clears throat> we teach first and we believe, of course, that we are not good or not good enough. And then later when we grow grown up and we still feel not good enough, then we ask or seek for That's people one. that can give us the feeling that we are good. Yes, that is the guilt complex which is put in there by our culture. So you feel guilty that you are not up to the mark, that you are not fitting yourself into the environment meant that you are not fitting yourself into the value system and so you feel guilty. It is created by the society and so then they have an antidote for your guilt, free yourself from guilt. So they have turned us all into neurotic individuals. <coughs> but it is absolutely necessary for us to live that neurotic life otherwise you have no way of functioning in this world. If you would stop it you would die. Hey, you, no. You see, I don't know what exactly you mean by if you stop it. There's I mean, no if, way you can stop some it. People, some people uh, believe that they can be good or get on a spiritual on a higher level by, for example, meditation. They, they are just kidding. Stopping thinking. No, the, no the, how do they go about? The only way they can stop their thinking is through thinking. So it is the most difficult uh, thing for us to understand that uh, thought, can only create problems, it cannot help us to solve the problems. That's all that we have. The thoughts help us to function very efficiently in this world. It's a tremendous instrument we have. That's the only instrument we have. There is no other instrument. 
but we also know that that is our enemy and it is that that is creating all the problems but it is very difficult for you to understand that that is not the instrument and there is no other instrument when that realization dawns in you that that is not the instrument and that there is no other instrument there is no need for you to look around for another kind of thing no instrument is necessary thought falls in its proper place and it functions in a very intelligent and sane way it helps us to function <coughs> sanely and intelligently in this world it cannot help us to create in what you are interested in what are you interested in what is anybody interested in this world the quest for permanent happiness right. that's all that they are interested in <clears throat> all these religious people who are selling those shoddy piece of goods in the marketplace assure us that there is eternal happiness that there is another kind of a bliss beatitude immensity and all that kind of a stuff <clears throat> and they put us on a merry go round but is it uh, <clears throat> is it it possible for example we teach the children for example to go against their feeling for example a kid doesn't want to go to school but we say with an argument with an id you have to go against your feeling because later you will be very grateful you get a good job you get money and so the body reacts by warning us that we go against it in a way you know this is the, the feelings are also thoughts or thoughts yes, they are also thoughts somehow we are made to believe that the feelings are different from the the thought hunger too the thirst too the You see, they they are natural functionings of the body. Yes. So hunger, what is hunger after all? The definition of hunger is, is something very strange. When the glucose level goes down, what you call hunger uh, is created there. The demand to maintain the level of glucose in your system. That's all. But if you don't feed this body for two or three days, probably the first two days you will feel the hunger tantrums. afterwards you don't know what hunger is no so the body begins <clears throat> to live on itself but then on a certain moment the hunger comes back and if then you, you know if you then don't no, eat the... so what you are left with is the memory of hunger of that's hunger. A hunger so that is why in all spiritual uh, pursuits the fasting is a very important factor both here in the, the west and in the east so fasting creates some disturbances in the chemistry of your and it gives you all kinds of experiences which are in the area of fantasies and you call them spiritual experiences and feel so good you know uh, in ireland where this uh, the terrorists uh, fasted for 63 days that's they, that's what they say uh, you can last for 61 62 63, 63 days that's all you can last so it lives on itself and they uh, have recorded some of those experiences which fall into the area of spiritual experiences so if you fast that fasting gives you some fantastic experiences and you you see give a name to them and call them the spiritual experiences all experiences demand more and more experiences of one kind and less and less of the other kind so there's all that we are interested in but there is no such thing as a new experience at all it needs water So if we deny water, a sort of a dehydration takes place, and it goes goes where? Yeah, goes where? It does not go anywhere. You see, the, it is put together, and then it um, falls apart. And so a reshuffling of atoms takes place in nature, and that is very essential for the universe because it has to maintain the level of energy in the universe. So it, this human body is an integral part of all this. Uh, the life forms of life on this planet it has no separate independent existence of its own it's a support system in a way it's a support system millions and millions of bacteria are crawling all over your body yeah. if it is possible for you to enlarge it magnify it and look under a uh, magnifying glass you will be surprised that some of them are as big as cockroaches yeah so they live on this inside of you the flora and the fauna mm. they 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 have Uh, their uh, own part to play. See, one form of life lives on another form of life. Yeah. Yeah, we all support each other. Support each other. So, so if we unpo- eat, for example, we support the body. If you are breathing, you support the body. You are inhaling millions of germs. Yeah. So, is that not killing? It is a sort of a killing. But you see, you cannot stop breathing. If you stop breathing, you will be choked to death. 
and probably those bacteria will have a field day. They enjoy a feast. <laughs> yeah. I have not, uh, and and it breathes out uh, millions of bacteria too. Oh, yes. Yeah. Your sweat is, is, uh, is bacteria and uh, you are killing them with uh, the armpit uh, cosmetics and uh, they are not good enough. Now they are coming out with something else. Uh, we create a market for that kind of a thing. Uh, I mean, if, we don't, if we don't accept it. Yeah, if you don't accept it, you see, you, yeah. you may consider me frivolous. And if I say that uh, it's, it's in, these, those smells are essential for sex activity. <laughs> you know, so the, you always smell. You know that. You see? Yeah. Don't make fun of that. You see, no. the smell plays a tremendous part in your love making, as is the case in the animals. We are no different from the animals. The unfortunate situation that the civilization has created for us to make us believe that we are created. If anybody has created us for a grander and nobler purpose than all these species on this planet, that's the first error. The second error is that the whole nature is created for our benefit. So any attempt on our part to understand the laws of nature and use them will inevitably result in creating mischief in this world and destroying what nature has created. You know? So instead of trying to improve ourselves, it's better to accept ourselves Ac as we are. Accept the reality of the situation exactly the way it is. It is. Yes. So as long as there is a demand, which is put in by culture. I'm not blaming culture. There is no way that you can destroy the culture. You are, you are created by that but and I, you are that. I mean, I, and yeah. you are that. Yeah. Your thinkings, your feelings, your yeah. experiences depend upon that. Otherwise, you have no way of experiencing yourself as an entity <clears throat> here. So what do we do about it? It's not a question of destroying that, but trying to understand what this is all about. And when once that understanding dawns on you, you become part of that culture and you cannot separate yourself and you are not in conflict with that culture. That's all that I'm trying to point out. Those who are interested in listening to what I have to say, <laughs> I have no message for mankind. As long <clears throat> as there is a demand in you to bring about a change, well, in, so in long there is yes, inside of you, yeah, with, within yeah, you. Yeah. So long there is a demand to change the world. And once this demand to bring about a change in you isn't there anymore, you are not concerned about changing the world. No. Uh, what is wrong with the world? Or about changing yourself. Changing yourself. My question is, what is there you think demands a change? I say there is nothing there to be changed. But so that's all the... that talk of radical yeah. change and radical mutation is frivolous nonsense. That's what we've learned. We've learned we're not good enough. So that's what we believe, so we're constantly trying to improve ourselves. That's the way to force you to fit into that value exactly. system. And so we, we do exactly the same thing. We force these things on our children, and they in their turn force it on their children. So this goes on and on and on, and there seems to be no end. I was talking to my hostess this morning at the breakfast table. If somebody can come up with, you see, a way of... Uh, of freeing the children from ignorance without destroying the innocence they are born with, that would be a tremendous feat. Yeah. Nobody has come up with any answers for that basic question, how to, how to leave the innocence, how the tremendous intelligence they are born with alone, yeah. and teach them how to fit into this framework. We really do not know. We have been a miserable lot. We have totally failed in fitting ourselves in, uh, into the value system. We are there is a constant battle between us and the value system. So there is no way you can, you see, help them we, uh, to I, function sanely and intelligently. Somewhere along the line, if they are lucky enough, they will have to realize and find out the answers for themselves and yeah. for themselves. Yeah, we saw it. We had I raised two kids and she didn't want to go to school. So we said, okay, you don't go to school, as they never went. They are but more intelligent than all those who have gone to this Much school. more. And, and Probably they don't have a tool to function in this world. So we, we, are, we, we are saddest. You know, you see. Mm. We are really saddest. We force these people to do things the way we want them to do. Exactly. Mm. That's why you keep the... the it's manipulation. The, the, yes, manipulation. They, unfortunately, they are also forced to accept our silly, idiotic ideas. They want uh, us to accept them and we want to force them into this framework. Yeah. That has been going on for centuries and probably 
it will go on forever and ever. And who knows? Unless we blow ourselves up one day. Yeah, anything and everything we are doing is slowly pushing us in the direction of wiping ourselves out and wiping out every form of life on But is the, is the manipulation a result of that I have an image of myself, you I project my image on you, on you so you. if I see something wrong with you, it's really something in me. Yes, it is. And I destroy you because I think something wrong with You're, you, and yes. I destroy, destroy myself. Ultimately, yes, we destroy ourselves. That is so, why uh, very often say that it is not love that will save us, but the terror that if I try to destroy you, I will also go. Yeah. That is what is happening in the, in the field of politics in the world around us. The superpowers have come to realize that they cannot destroy their adversaries without destroying themselves. themselves. So that has to percolate to the level of the common man's thinking. Yeah. That I cannot destroy my neighbor without destroying myself. myself. It's so that's one thing. It is, that's the way you see this living organism is functioning. You see the cellular structure is functioning. Unless it cooperates with the cell that is next to it, it has no way of survival. So that's the reason why it cooperates, not because of love, not because of brotherhood, not because of understanding that uh, your survival depends upon uh, the survival of your fellow beings, but your survival and the survival of your fellow beings go together. So what you literally see around you, that's you. Your, your projection of you. Anything. Anything you see is created by you. I, I don't mean by you, you see. The, By what I think is me. That, that, yes, what is there is, is uh, responsible for creating all these problems. You see, the, the, the idea that uh, we create the world, you see, the world creates you in a way. It's a yeah. very strange situation, you see. So when I say these things to people in India, they, they have this uh, idea that there is a subject there, it is the subject that creates the object. But... Uh, Actually, it is the other way around. You see, the, the object creates the subject. You see, if you say that's an object, we get into this discussion, metaphysical discussion, philosophical discussion, yeah. logical discussion, to prove that, you see, you say that there is an object, how is that object different from the subject, and so on and so forth. That helps us only to sharpen this instrument which we use right. to understand the reality of things. For example, that light hmm, thrown on these objects, reflects them and that the image you have on the retina, you see, is the one that is actually created by the, the light there. And in that process, the, the neurons, the memory cells are activated and tells you that, that she's a woman, that is a man, that his pullover is, is red and that is black. So if you have no ID, if you've never learned, you cannot see it? You, you, you cannot see. That's why I always give the... the <coughs> The example of what goes on the television set, you see. The images are created by us. You will be surprised. They are only dots, you see. Yeah. So you, you see the pictures. What you see there is a projection of yours. You will be surprised. Actually, there are only dots there. Yeah. So supposing you uh, take this, uh, the, the cassette and play in an African jungle. She also knows that they look like the human beings. Some others there look like... Uh, the women and the animals and all that. But they are projecting their own ideations and mentations on what they are looking. Right. They are actually dots. Yeah. There's nothing there. Exactly. So listening also is the same. You see, when you listen to music, uh, you, you don't listen the gaps between the two notes. The continuity to the music is created by you. Yeah. So actually, this the listening mechanism listens as... as there's the gap between the two notes and the tune. Yeah. That is music. Yeah. So all of our music is a cultivated taste. Yes. You know? It's, uh, say, say took uh, a man from the African jungle into the open field where he had never been in his life. And he saw people in the distance and he got terrified because he saw small people. Yes. He had never learned distance, for example. No. So you have to literally learn everything. Even that is thought to function in this three-dimensional space is taught by somebody yeah. to us. Right. So otherwise you have no way of experiencing the three-dimensional space in which you and I are functioning. So we're totally stuck in a, a pattern. So when such a thing happens to a particular individual, you see the psychiatrist comes along and tells that, you see, we have got to put together the identity which you are losing. Without mm -hmm. that, you have no way of experiencing 
even the th three-dimensional space in which we are supposed to be function. The physical organism does not say to itself that there is a wall there. So it does not mean that when you go there, you hit yourself against the wall and hurt yourself. When you are there, then there is an action. That action is the intelligence that is there. So it moves away, like the water flowing. If there is a block there, it either overflows or sidesteps and goes away somewhere else. So in exactly the same way, when you are there, this knows how to act because it doesn't want to hurt itself, strike, hit the, the wall there. So, but you constantly live in the space created by your thoughts. Thought is a space, you know. Otherwise, you have no way of experiencing the space at all. Some moments when the thought is uh, uh, slows down, when the thought slows down, some individuals experience a state where there seems to be no space at all, and they are frightened. Yeah. At the same time, when the body gets into severe danger, then the first thing the body does is stop thinking. Stop thinking. And you run like you've never thought possible of running. Yeah, you jump off a wall, so you never thought it was possible. Certainly, if you, if you are on the top of a tree and the branch falls, if you fall with it, it is the fear that is responsible for uh, breaking your bones. Breaking your bones. Otherwise, if you, if you are not frightened of the consequences, the possibility of breaking your bones when you hit the, uh, the ground, then it becomes like it becomes very supple. It's like a rubber doll, right. and it lands on the ground like a rubber doll. Like children, they fall like, from staircases like and nothing happens. There was a story that uh, a little child fell from a um, seventh floor or eighth floor. I don't remember the exact floor in uh, New York. The child got up and walked away. Yeah, right. So we should not try that experiment because we, <laughs> no, <don't. laughs> we break our bones. <laughs> yeah. So if you believe it, it happens. The, the fear that you will hurt yourself. You so you, you find yourself in a jungle. The, the cobras are the most beautiful creatures. <laughs> you see. If you are not frightened that the cobra will uh, kill you, you, see, you, see, you will be surprised that uh, they will take a walk with you. Yes. You know, or even the wild animals there. So when once you are frightened, you emit some sort of odors. So they have to take the first step. They don't trust the human beings at all, because they kill for nothing. They kill only one person who is threatening to kill, but we kill all the hundreds and thousands of cobras, and that creates a problem in the fields, because the field mice have a field day there, yes. and they destroy our crops and we have a problem. <clears throat> and so every, every species has a definite place in the scheme of things. It is our fear that it will destroy our child. You will be surprised that, you see, the cobras never b uh, bite a, a child, you know, because they know that the child is harmless. But if they look at us, they know that uh, we are not harmless. We are going to kill not one cobra, but hundreds of cobras. And the reason we kill the cobras well, we, is because we are terrified of them. Terrified and we emit order, so it has to take the first step. We have uh, better weapons than uh, the cobra has. so. It's fighting a lost battle with us. Yes. In nature, you see, they fight to the lost, and that is the end, or if they find that they cannot fight, they run away. So we are not like that. We create all the imaginable situations and try to destroy everything in nature. There is a tremendous balance in nature. Our idea of harmony is born out of our very crude uh, thinking. Yes, we have to so we have, that we have to fight nature, yeah. and we are nature too, so we are fighting we are, ourselves. We are fighting ourselves. Yeah, it's very interesting. So it's a contradiction. It's a contradiction. That, that's the neurotic uh, state that is created by culture. So there is no use blaming the culture. No. No, I'm not blaming the culture. If you, if you destroy one culture, you replace with another culture. That's the, the human history. The body needs culture. The body does not need culture. No. <laughs> no. If I if I put a kid in in in, a, in, a, in an island where there's nothing, no other people. It is your fear. They will probably see, find out some way of thriving in that environment. We don't. Yeah. know. It is our fear that we are projecting on them. No, no. But uh, say will take say will take the culture of that environment. Certainly, certainly. Yeah. Yes. If I bring it in the, in the nest of a wolf, it will become a wolf. It will become part of that uh, yeah. env environment there, but it yeah. is our fear, you see, that is responsible for 
the problems we create for the children, they, they also in a way see, want to be accepted by us. It is a, it's not a one way, no. it is two ways. And children believe everything immediately. No, I don't no? think so. They question. They question. They question. They are frightened to disagree with us, to argue with us, to fight. You see, what you put in them is fear. The fear is all that is there. You do not want the fear to come to you. The fear is not something abstract. The the fear is something living there. You don't want to look at that fear. You have no way of looking at that. The only way you can deal with the fear is how to be free from fear. That's all that we are told. You know, all the therapies, all the techniques uh, uh, that are offered to us is how to deal with something that you cannot deal with. It's uh, something living there. So yeah. all these houses are dead house, created, yeah. born out of the imagination. So we have no way of dealing with that at all. No, and all our institutions are based on fear. The, the police, thing, the bank, everything, the insurance, everything, everything is based everything, on fear. Everything, the yeah. status quo, yeah. everything, even the whole legal structure. So the whole fear is born out of uh, the situation we find ourselves when we separated ourselves from the rest of life around us. In that fear, you see, we created God, we created uh, so many things. You know, the whole thing came out of that. And do you have a definition for fear? What is the point in defining? I don't know, I don't know, I just should ask. Yeah, that is something which no. you cannot touch, you cannot uh, see, you cannot experience that at all. It's if a, it's you a leave that fear alone, that it will burn what you are trying to free yourself from. Is, say that again? You see, if you leave that alone, it yes. will burn the whole instrument that you are using to free yourself from fear. If you accept it? No, no, accept is not the word. If you Support accept, it? The, none of those words uh, fit, fit uh, into the situation. You leave it alone. Uh, I see. You know, leaving it alone is through uh, some attempt of yours to leave it alone. Yeah, right. we, we are playing all the time these tricks with us, yeah, ourselves, right, right. Right, with right. ourselves. We are experts, past masters in this game. Yes. We enjoy that game. Yeah, so we create problems and then we make the same way to try to undo the problems. problems. Yeah. So if you don't have a problem, you don't feel <laughs> that you are living. Yeah. You have to have a problem. And your attempt to solve the problem makes you feel that you are living. Yeah, right. That's all that uh, we are interested in. So it's a kind of restriction that creates growth? No, I'm not with you. No, I don't know. I was asking that word again. I'm not with you. If, uh, if, if like, it, like, say, a problem is a kind of, we feel it as a kind of restriction. Actually, there is no problem there. No, no, of course not. Actually, there is no problem. There is a mechanical problem. Something is wrong, we see, with that right there. Uh, there is an expert who has, uh, through repeated uh, attempts, uh, discovered how to repair that. Yeah. So this is something living. Yeah. So those techniques uh, cannot help us to solve something living because this will destroy them. All the techniques we have evolved to solve these living problems, these problems are living. You know, the, the techniques are dead techniques born out of the thinking of somebody. Anything that is born out of thought is, uh, is destructive. It, it is trying to protect itself. You see, it is interested only in status quo, maintaining its uh, status quo. So what is intuition? Intuition uh, is a tricky word. It's nothing but a sensitized thought. You see, it makes you feel that you are, can understand the problems. It is an ingenuous invention of thought. And to create a word like insight, that uh, intuition, but actually, intuition is nothing but a sensitized thought. You know, it's a very and, and, and the same feeling is also the, an idea. The, the thought, you see. So unless you tell yourself that you are happy, you have no way of knowing that you are happy. No. Or you are angry, you see. You have no way of discovering that for yourself unless you tell yourself that you are angry. But you can give by believing it yourself the illusion that you feel good. That is an illusion, but... Uh, you see, you are not ready to free yourself from that illusion. You see, we are all trying to free ourselves from illusion, but you replace one illusion with, with another. another illusion. That's all that we can do. We do not want the illusion to come to an end. If the illusion comes to an end, or the belief structure that we have created comes to an end, you come to an end. That is the only death, there is no other death. 
What happens after that? What is left is not your concern. It is the concern of others. It is their problem, not your problem. Anymore. Isn't that enough? That's enough. How long have we been? <coughs> I have say the same thing again and again. Oh, and again. Yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> that's all. But that's that's what our mind is doing anyway. That's we all. say it's the same thoughts process. every day, again and again every, and again. Every day, every day. Every day. The same thing. That's the only way it can survive and yeah. maintain its continuity. It's like that's a broken record in a way. Yes, a stuck needle. A stuck needle. It repeats itself. That's all that we are interested in. We want to hear this. Hear the same tune again and again and again. Yeah. But they, they discovered that uh, for story writing, there's only 36 plots. Even that is doubtful. You are and a storyteller, and you, yeah. you have exhausted all the 36. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to start all over again. But you will have a different audience. Oh, yeah, sure. Different age, children. But I think with television, too, people have seen everything already so many times, and to see it yeah, again and again and again. They also want to see the same thing again and again. The, yeah. That is how all these musicians thrive, because you want to listen to the music over and over and over again. Yeah. It's a repetitive process that it is all interested in. Otherwise, anything new there is a threat. It takes time. See, in any field, in the field of science, in the field of music, in the field of art, uh, it's not so easy for those people who are caught up in this classical music to enjoy the pop and rock music of today. You see, they blame these children. They say, your tastes are very vulgar, they say. But uh, the moment you see this comes on television, I have a friend who is steep in this classical music. He turns off the television. Yes. Why the hell does he do it, I ask him. You see, that's also music. He just cannot take that music. No. And why do you expect uh, those children who are interested in rock music, pop music, to bother about the classical music? Hmm? These are all cultivated tastes. Yeah. So if, uh, if you don't have the taste for it, or you don't have the ID for it, if you've never heard of it, Such and it might be there, but you cannot see it. No, it's a, such, nothing there. such a situation does not exist no. at all. Either you are familiar with this, or you have cultivated a taste in the Western music, or the Eastern music, or pop music, or rock music. The problem with uh, uh, the, the modern uh, electronics is that you are not satisfied with the two microphones for eight, 16, probably very soon we will have 32. It's already 48. 48, so yeah. it's uh, more than <laughs> your story plots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is something. So you have to have the same titillation there, you see, otherwise you don't feel. Uh, that's music, you know. Yeah. And well, uh, that's fun, that's life. <laughs> C'est la vie. Yeah, nothing wrong. <laughs> nothing wrong, I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying anything. So, but, but we feel superior because our tastes are very refined. Yeah. And you know, the boys who listen to this uh, rock music, pop music, it's all sexy, it is this, that and the other. But I don't see any difference between what is uh, rock music. Music is music, you know. Like food, you know, all our tastes are cultivated tastes. So one, one person's, uh, one man's, I cannot say, this is an age where we, feminists are fighting for their rights. So, the languages also, you see, is very strange, you know. But then if you believe that... Mankind, you say, but what about half the population don't seem to have any role to play <laughs> in this world? Yeah. The language structure is so absurd. Mankind, you say, you always refer to man as if the other half does not exist. They have every right to fight for their rights. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is that uh, uh, one man's food is another man's poison. See, that's a... I'm just quoting in the proverb. You know. One man's taste is another man's taste. Uh, is different, you know. So there it is. But trying to uh, find out the, the, the common uh, factor uh, is very difficult. You know. So, but the belief uh, we always force others to accept our belief. thinking, our beliefs, no. our ideas. You can believe what you like. The moment you try to impose your belief on your neighbor. You are creating a war there. Right. You can believe in what you like, but you use that as an instrument of destruction. Force it on others. On others yes. That's what we do. That's what religions have done. In yeah. the name of uh, love thy neighbor as thyself, we have killed more people than all the recent wars put together. How can we justify that? We use God as an instrument of destruction. 
We use love as an instrument of destruction, brotherhood as an instrument of destruction, you know. So that's all that we are interested in imposing our ideas on others. And what is the conversation between two individuals? You'd be surprised. Uh, you are through logic, through rationality, through every instrument you have at your disposal. If everything fails, you play the last card. If you loved me, you would not do this. These are all parenthetical clauses. The conversation between two individuals is to make the other person to do the things exactly the way you want. You want to do. Otherwise, the whole conversation comes to end. Yeah. Some people go to a movie when, uh, when they come home. I ask them, how is the movie? It's just a question, you see. Instead of telling me it is good or bad, I will be satisfied if they said only bad or good. But they go on and on and on for 15 to 20 minutes to tell me why the film was bad. And compare that film with all the other films which they have seen before or which they are going to see. That's all the conversation. So if you are a past master in that kind of a game, you are considered to be a great conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Or you descend to the level of uh, Salon de Thé or, you know, coffee <laughs> table conversation, or what, what are the other phrase we have? Is it cocktail lunch. Cocktail, cocktail lunch. lunch yeah, yeah. Yes. You talk about the food yeah. you eat and the, uh, your tastes and the, the clothes you wear, where you bought this. I'm not cynical, I'm just pointing out. No, no, it's mostly uh, talking about poems, actually. Yes, that's all. And it's, your uh, taste, your yeah. taste, how refined your tastes yes, are. And, uh, Bad my taste, sir. That, that's all the conversation. Everybody is trying to educate everybody. You know, you'll be surprised that we can learn a lot from children than from all the secular and spiritual teachers put together in this. Yes. Because it's life speaking to us. Yes. We are not intelligent enough to understand what they are trying to teach us. Yeah. We think that we know a lot. We have got to learn a lot from those children. They will teach us a lot. Yeah. You know, it's true. the problem is that we cannot deal with them. They are too much for us, you know. The energy they have, tremendous energy they have. We don't have energy to deal with those children, you know. It is a tremendous problem. I don't have any easy answers for that. I'm not a teacher. I'm not an educationist. I'm just pointing out that I have learned much more than from a child than from all the spiritual and secular teachers put together. Yeah. That's enough, I think. We'll have a chance to talk again. We are going there tonight or that's not there? Yes, uh, tonight we can talk on uh, Radio 100. I'll repeat the same thing. Yes, we'll talk about the same thing. The audience probably <clears throat> will be different. I have one more question. Uh, yes, how does art fit in this? You piece? are asking a wrong man. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you want to place art on a higher level? than any craftsmanship, that's my question. Mm -hmm. See, unfortunately, if there is no market for his creation, he'll be out of business. Suddenly, you know, your great artist is starved, and people pay for millions and millions of dollars for their paintings. And it's the market uh, that is responsible for uh, all this uh, so-called artistic creation. <clears throat> and uh, they are not uh, decent and decorous enough to admit that what all they create is nothing but an imitation of what is already there in nature. You know? So all art is imitation of something that is there in nature. But nature doesn't seem to use anything as a model. So no two faces are the same, no two human beings are the same. So nature is creating something new all the time without a model. So that's the only creativity that is there in nature. But what we call creativity in uh, arts, in literature, in music, in, in all the other <coughs> fields of human thinking, is uh, acceptable, workable only within that frame. That's all that I'm saying. For one who has no taste for all this uh, ancient or modern art, uh, I cannot say much. You see, the, he is just a craftsman, like any other craftsman. He uses that tool to express himself. So all Human creation is born out of sensuality. 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 The sensory activity is all that this uh, human body is involved with, involved in. I don't know what the correct preposition is. 
<coughs> so I'm not saying anything against that at all, you see. The, the demand uh, is that, you see, for sensual pleasure. So that is the pleasure movement. So I, even that is, is a, has to be cultivated by you, otherwise you have no way of uh, appreciating uh, the beauty, the art, uh, and uh, they feel superior because you don't have the taste that is expected of you. So if you question them and make funny comments <coughs> about this, you see, their creation, they want us to go to a school and learn how to appreciate them. How to appreciate it. Yeah, if you don't know That's how, how culture develops. Yes, if we don't know how to enjoy a piece written, poem written by somebody else, they send you to school and teach us how to appreciate poetry. That's all that they are doing in the educational institutions, yeah. to teach us how to appreciate beauty, how to appreciate music, how to appreciate painting, how to appreciate poetry. So they, they make a living and we are forced to learn the art of appreciating what they have created. But I don't see any creativity there. My field is quite different. And now you would be surprised, one of these days uh, uh, the computers will paint, <coughs> create music much better than all the, the painters and uh, the musicians that the world has produced. So far it may not happen in our own lifetime, but it's going to happen, you know. So exactly the same process that is operating in you, you are no different from your company. We are not ready to accept because we are made to believe <coughs> that we are not just machines, that there is a something more there. Unless we come to terms with that and accept that we are machines, you know, and that is a very intelligent machine there, with a tremendous intelligence there. And the human intellect which we have developed through education, through all kinds of techniques, is no match to them. That's enough. No, no match at all. No match, <laughs> sir. We continue this, uh, this evening. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Well. That is yours, not mine. I have nothing to do with it.